up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we're going to be checking out another track from an act named Kai Wern, titled Future Me. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on the screen, Future Me. If we go down to here, we can see stream Future Me now B-side from the cut after the first. Melodies and lyrics by Kai Wern, originally written in Chinese as well by Kai Wern in 2010, so it was a little while ago, which is cool. It's nice to bring music, you know, back that you wrote a while ago and get it recorded, you know? And then the producer was Xin Yu Qin. So that's great. We've got lyrics kindly provided here as well, which we'll check out near the end. We're going to listen through this track from start to finish. And we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Nice contrasting pitches between the different guitar takes. The world is just too cold. I don't want to get old. I do what I am told. Mm. My dreams hold on hold. I thought I need to be wise and try to play nice, but I'm too precise. Can be criticized. All I can do is just try to close my eyes. What I like is the uh, interesting chord site that they appear to with their dominant seventh there, combined with a really warm sounding trumpet on one side of the stereo field, so it's not distracting too much from the lead in the center. And it's just a really polished studio recording. The quality of it is just fantastic. Is this my destiny? The struggle internally. How can I try? Nice contrast between the plucks, scattered you know, parts, and the legatos and the strings are there. And they're not normal triads either, with the backing harmony, you know. And the keys as well are just a fantastic little highlight there in the ether. took your advice and try not to cry but to my surprise i just compromise as i lay down and just try to close my eyes is this my destiny to drown in my trap See how we have that interlude there, that intersection? And there's a twist in the story. Oh, goodbye, farewell, so long on me. The music changes to coincide with that. That's the point of having an interlude like that. It's a change of perspective. It's what I think a lot of people can... Um, I wish there were more really sort of well-done interludes in modern music. Yeah. 
Yes, it's my destiny to wrestle to victory. I will try to push through this boundary. I know that chord progression. To make more of life's memories, you will be proud of me when you see me better to future. It's really special music. It seems like it's really heartfelt. It seems like Kai Wen really cares about the story they're trying to tell here. They're putting 100% of their heart into it. I know that sounds so generic. Without trying to sort of exaggerate the listening section more, I, I want to just, I want to comment. The reason I think that it's so uh, wonderfully done is that I don't know how you could be more authentic or real than what he's describing there. It seems like we're going to go to the lyrics in a moment. But how do you possibly improve on that insight into their life? How can you not get a sense of who the person is when they open themselves up like that? And they tell the story in a way that's so accessible. I mean, like, how can you do better than that? There's even a progression, a little bit of Bildung's Romanesque kind of thing going on there, but a character, to, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's just really clever. And I appreciate the effort put in. Where we got lyrics. So we're going to make them big. Here we go, got the lyrics here. Hopefully you guys can see them. The world is just too cold, I don't want to get old. You know, there's a lot of rhyming going on here and I think that's totally fine. It's nice and easy to follow. You can kind of semi-predict like syllable wise what's gonna occur next. Helps to tie lines together as long as those you know lines are relevant to each other, they make it very effective. Yeah, so I think that if we go to the conclusion, you know, because welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an act named Kai Wern, titled Future of Me. I'm gonna make that normal sized. Here we go. What do I what do I think this track is about? I think that it's a letter to their future self to sort of uh, try and sort of commiserate the experience that they've had, the struggles they were occurring with, the sort of self doubt, the uh, just the difficulties of being alive. You know, the journey they're on, hoping things will improve trying to leave them old self behind as I mentioned the story to work towards a new me and I think that it's kind of like the time capsule exercise I don't know if you did it when I was a kid you know at a at primary school we had to make you know time capsules we had to open them up later on aside from the stick of gum I put in there that was definitely not still good uh you know you, you read the the letters that you sent to yourself and you you change as a person a lot over that time and I think what Chiron is doing here, which is something I think a lot of people can really sort of appreciate and sort of sort of gel with, is that well, we've simply got a track where the story is something that everyone can relate to. And it's, again, it's so authentically told. And the language is nice and accessible as well. Um, you know, like it's not superfluous for the vocabulary. And I think that's really important because if you get a little bit too kind of clever with the terminology, it becomes a little bit like you're almost trying to sort of flex your 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 dictionary. You know what I mean? So I, I like the fact that we're we described it like this. I like the lyrical progression between each section. I just think altogether the story is very well told. You know, moving on from the story and what's happening there, as you would have, you know, I'm sure it was it was sung well enough that you could easily sort of hear the story without needing the, the captions and stuff or the lyrics being written. But we had them anyways. So lyrics or the sort of vocal, should I say, were done really fantastically. I'm really stoked with how we approach things there. We had someone who was clearly able to sort of explain the story, their emotional standpoint or perspective at that point in time. And they did it in a way which was uh, not only emotionally, like performatively deserving of the, the stuff within the lyrics, but it was also just technically well done. There weren't a whole lot of hard consonants or anything like that. We weren't going for, we were, it was more of a softer kind of ex way of expressing things. 
And I think that when there's that softness there, it's a bit kinder. It's not like we're trying to sort of like make hard sounds with it, I think, especially with the softness of the piano, the keys, the trumpets and everything like that, the horns, should I say, uh, it wouldn't have suited. So I think I, I, can, I congratulate Kai Warren on picking the right way of sort of vocalizing or verbalizing those parts. We had just Kai Warren by themselves for the most part. I don't think there were any backing vocals or anything like that. If there were harmonies, they came from the other backing instruments within the arrangement. It was just um, a sensational performance. You know, I've got no complaints about the vocals, you know, comfortable with the head and chest voice, uh, harmonized really neatly, not just with the major minor chords, but with also some of the trickier kind of patterns we had. There were some extensions or maybe even some sort of sus chords or whatever I think in there as well. It's just, it shows not only a, a really good understanding of how to sing, but also a fundamental understanding of music theory and composition, because what we have here is a song that does not rely on simplicity. It engages in a sense of complexity with the harmonies and stuff like that, I think, to communicate to the listener that even if the lyrics may seem pretty simple, there's a whole lot more sort of depth behind it than what's sort of on the surface. And I think it encourages you, you know, it encourages you when you listen to it to kind of get lost in the world. Part of it is that you didn't have the instruments on the same side of the stereo field. Like you had like a lower guitar part on the left and a higher guitar part on the right with the, with the trumpets or the horns coming in on the right exclusively, I think. Um, we might we had other sort of string plucks going on, on the left side and that sort of made the stereo field a little bit unbalanced, but because of the way things were playing, you could kind of more easily follow along to them individually because of that. And that's the strength of it. We didn't have everything all the time. There was a general sort of sense of progression throughout the track from A to B where we had that thing's built up towards the end for the big finish after the interlude. But it never got too massive. There was a sense of dynamic range within this. It never, like, I was expecting the drums to come in, which would have been such a thing to do. You know, like a lot of people put drums later on for that purist kind of ballad format. But I have to kind of admire Kai Warren for not doing that because, again, it's predictable. Allowing yourself simply to have those four minutes or four and a half minutes, which is outside of two to four minutes sweet spot, I might add, but because of the intrigue with the harmonies and chord progressions, because of the variations in the way that, because if we talk about a few of the different instruments, for example, outside of a, a track that's reasonably, predict, like, like not predictable, what I mean, it's like easy to sort of follow along with. So like there's, you know, verses and choruses and interludes and stuff. They The transitions are seamless and gel together really neatly. It's, it's more like if I, the guitar parts had really interesting chord choices, the finger style was fantastic. The different takes were a master stroke, given the low and then the high, because they niched well on top of each other despite not being in the same position. It, that, that created a sense of interest. The softer way of singing sort of flowed well with them as well. It just seemed very sort of pad-like and soft and soothing. And um, when things to get a little, maybe like there was some strumming later on, but it was mixed and mastered in a way where it was so bright and charming that you kind of got lost in it. It was, it was mesmerizing. The keys, when they came in at their midpoint, were nice and fragrant. They had a similar pace rhythmically to what was going on with some of the guitar parts there. Um, they had a charming sort of almost jazzy quality to it that enabled us to really just kind of ponder more about what was being sort of spoken to us in the lyrics. And what I appreciate about the fact that the keys were not the main focal point is again, that's just such a, a really common thing. But the guitar has always kind of been a focus of Kaiwen's work, as I understand it, which which is which makes sense here. But the keys, nonetheless, were very well sort of phrased in that mid to higher range there. Maybe with some lower notes for bass resonance occasionally, but a lot of the whole track was in the mid to high range. And I think that they were nice. They were a nice extra bit of instrumental layering to midpoint to carry us out until the end. The strings we had them went between legato sections and plucked ish kind of bits there. And they weren't the same the entire time. We had variations with how they were phrased and how they ornamented the chord parts of the guitar. Um, typically, we didn't have everything doing different things at the same time. Uh, different instruments would take different turns switching things up, which allowed us to, I suppose, more appreciate when there was a change because you can more easily follow along to it. But yeah, the strings harmonized neatly. The interval choices were solid and niched well with the piano and the guitar. And then just in that sort of like the, the second half of like the bridge section or the verse section in that first verse when the, the horns gets you know, they just came really softly and sweetly. And it was such a beautiful tone to it as well. And the simplicity of those motifs on that instrument really sort of enabled to provide a sense of contrast to some of the complexity of the other string parts. And overall was a nice foil to it because of that. 
and because it was more of a legato-ish kind of thing, there weren't sort of peppy staccatos unlike the strings, you had just a sense of smoothness and softness and it almost provided a sense of foundation even though it, up, it was up into the mid-high ranges. And when you combine these different factors, they, they just intersect and niche in a way that creates this overall concept that, again, I recognize some of those chord progressions. I think there might have been a parallel major or minor in there somewhere that's just very satisfying when it comes in and then repeat. It, we, it smashed it. It, wor it worked well for what it had. And uh, I'm, I just want to, yeah, it, it wasn't, there were no sort of solo sections in addition to it. It was more of sort of vocal focused. But, you know, when you had all the instruments combined in that chorus section, it had a sense of sadness to it because I think with those minor chords and the focus on that, it, it insinuated that we had a sense of unhappiness with the life or the position we're in at that point in time. But then, you know, the, the brightness, the, how shiny things were, I don't think it was just a way to sort of soften the kind of intensity of those feelings of sadness. I think it was also to insinuate that there was a sense of a positivity, a, a hope should I say, I hope that things will improve in the future and that by leaving behind the old us, that we will move forward and find something more positive. So ultimately, I think that was very effective and it, it, it communicated several different things, which is, again, one of the benefits of having several different sections within a track. And it did so in a way which is nice and neat to follow on to, with the performance overall being nice and connected with great synergy between the different instrumentalists involved and not a note out of place. I mean, finally, it's just the studio recording, mixing and mastering the production of it, which is absolutely tremendous. Really satisfied with what we had to the table today. Uh, you know, the vocals are nice and clear. The guitars are nice and shiny. The piano and keys and the trumpet was fantastic too. All the horn, we which had things nicely nailed down within the stereo field, stereo field, should I say, in the frequency spectrum. Plenty of dynamic range. Things were not the same loudness the entire time. And uh, it was nice to know without pumping. So effectively, it was commercial grade. Overall, really satisfied with this track. It's another solid effort from Kaiwa, and I'd personally recommend if you like this track today, please do go check out the various social medias and YouTube page. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this review of Kaiwa's Future Me. Hopefully, you have a great day. Please do go and remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as either help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you next review. Spider Hands out.